Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Sonnet, the owner and creator behind Sonnet's Garden Blooms. And in today's video, you guys are getting a thrift to treasure. So I went back into my stash. I'm starting to clear out my hoard, you guys. And I picked five items that I needed to upcycle. And in today's video, I am transforming them. And I cannot wait to show you how they turned out. For project one, I thrift any cutting board I ever find. Now, even though it did have a Goodwill tag on here, I actually picked this up at the bins. So nobody wanted it at Goodwill. I already had done a lot of prep work, cleaned it, and I sanded it. Now, I am using a color by Fusion called Inglenook. I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that correctly. This color, you guys, definitely caught my eye. It is very, um, it just reminds me of like the holidays, winter. It could even be a spring color. It's definitely very universal. And I decided this would be a perfect color palette to get me through the holidays and into like the January months where you don't know um, what colors to put in your booth. This one will be perfect. I should also mention, did you guys notice the paintbrush? So Debbie Beard has one for DIY paint. It is called the Perfectionist and it has that perfectly pointed tip. And all her brushes work really well with the DIY paint. So now that I'm carrying Fusion, because if you ever felt Debbie's uh, paintbrushes, they're like super soft. I mean, if you rub them against your skin, it's almost like a makeup brush. And you, if you use any type of top coat or anything with those, you definitely want to make sure you wash them immediately. Um, and so because I'm using Fusion now, Fusion uses Stahl Meester. And I saw that they had a, like, a similar brush to the Perfectionist. So I grabbed one. And these are going to be um, something I am going to be carrying on my website as well. So I will be listing those very, very soon for all of you. But oh my gosh, you guys, I was so excited when I saw that. So what I'm doing here, uh, I'm applying one even coat of the Fusion Paint. I go back after it dries very thoroughly and I add another coat. My initial vision for this cutting board was a little different than how it actually turned out. I did want to put this stamp on it, but I was also going to add a bit of transfer. After I put the stamp on there, I thought simpler sometimes is better. Uh, so I left it as is. But what I'm using or the color that I'm using is called stone gray. Sometimes the black can be a bit harsh. And so I always, uh, my secondary favorite color is stone gray. So I'm inking up the stamp. And again, I'm lining it all up laying it down and then with the stamps you just have to gently rub over all the wording just to make sure you get a really nice impression on your board. Now I am going to just work my way down. Um, I want that Le Courier to be right on top and then I'm just going to add a few more of the actual articles below. The last thing I'm doing is adding a bit of twine here and sometimes simple is more. So I love how this turned out and it can fit into your kitchen or dining room area or wherever you would want it. For Project 2, I thrifted this a while ago, and I love little containers like this. It can house so many odds and ends, um, and you can decorate them up in so many different ways. It was in really good condition, and again, we are breaking out that same color 
What I've decided to do is paint the base that entire color. I'm going to leave it a bit plain because the top is where I'm going to definitely accent and add a bit more. So um, we're going to just paint this one even coat of Ingle Nook and I'm going to let this dry and then we're going to work on the top. What I did is I went outside, I sanded the entire top, and it came off very easily. So they must have just stamped that um, wording on there. If I had not sanded that off, I would have ran into, I'm sure, a lot of bleed through um, with it being black. So I thought, you know what, go down right to the wood and it'll make decorating that much easier. I'm starting off, I'm going to paint the rim uh, the same color, and then we're gonna start working on the top. For starters, I'm using White Swan from DIY Paint. I'm going to lay down one even coat, and then we're gonna come back and we are going to add a piece of Roycycle decoupage paper. And I have been dying to use uh, her neutral blocks. I just haven't found a piece that was big enough and this one is going to be perfect. Now, all the products that I'm using in today's video, you can purchase on my website. So if you want to replicate any of the projects, everything is available on my website at www.sonnetsgardenblooms.com. So here is the neutral project blocks and it is two pieces or two sided I should say and I can get a couple projects possibly out of each one or two very large ones. I am using this half and at first I was trying to decide what I actually wanted on my image and in the end I decided to have a bit of that tree. I wanted that full round circle and some of that top so that is how I end up positioning it. Do you guys remember that tree that I actually made in a previous video? Well, I decide I'm going to use that in this project. So I figure out how I wanted it laid, um, but I think it's a little bit too green. And I decide to use some of that ingle nook to add just a bit of, make it look like snow on the very tips. And so I add just a little bit here and there all over the tree. Next, after I cut off that bear, because I definitely want to save him for a different project, I line it all up and I figure out exactly where I want to position this. Then I can decoupage it on. My go-to decoupage medium is Liquid Patina from DIY. Definitely uh, the perfect medium to work with Roycycled paper. I love it. So I am sure you guys have seen me do this a number of times, but sometimes there are new viewers that haven't seen this before. I bend my paper back and I always use a starter strip. So I apply just a nice even layer at the top. Once I get that laid down, I then smooth out my paper and take my paintbrush and basically just work out any of the wrinkles or air bubbles, flip my paper up, and then I continue to work my way down. If there are any tiny wrinkles or air bubbles left, what I do at the end is I like to take my heat gun and just heat it up a bit. And as it's warming up, I just take my hand and kind of rub it and it basically the wrinkles go away. Okay guys, I am not happy with the color of this tree. From the previous project, I added a bunch of glitter and I think the glitter definitely changed the total color of the tree. I even added a bit of ingle nook to the ends of the branches thinking that that might change the look of it. I was still not happy. So I broke out the original color and I am reapplying that green um, to the entire tree. And now um, I'm gonna let that dry. And then what I end up doing is taking that ingle nook and adding a little bit, I kind of like dry brush it all over the tree and it gives it the appearance that there's snow sitting on the branches. 
Now it's time to get rid of the excess paper. The only uh, tip I can tell you here is definitely make sure your decoupage paper is completely dry before you sand uh, or try sanding the excess away. And always sand in a downward motion, never up. So as you can see, I'm kind of I'm sanding basically down, and I start in one spot and I work my way around, and it gives you just a really nice clean image. The last thing I'm going to do here is use Type Bond and apply just a nice even coat of Type Bond to the very back of the tree, smooth it out with my finger, and I always just try to feather it to the edges. You don't want a lot of glue oozing out when you lay your project down. So I do that over the entire tree, figure out exactly where I want the tree to be laid down, and then I apply it. And that completes this project. I love how it turned out. I love the 3D um, image of the tree on there. Um, it's absolutely perfect. Uh, you can nestle it right under your Christmas tree or in um, another vignette in your home. For project three, I had this scrap piece of wood lying around from some shelves that I had built and I have been dying to use Royce's new stencil. So she has um, a cloche, uh, a, a larger cloche. And on this stencil, it comes with several different items. It's super cool. There's a light bulb, a jar, a, another cloche, and that is what we're gonna be using today. So I um, am going to also use the little snowman from um, Connie and we're gonna nestle that little snowman inside that cloche. I am using the other side of that neutral uh, Christmas paper and I'm figuring out exactly where I want to cut this out. So I'm just taking, I'm actually using a fine tip marker, but I would definitely recommend using a pencil because I knew I was going to use like a darker color on the outside, but if you were going to use a lighter color uh, to stencil with, you probably would not want that marker. So this is kind of uh, not the best thing that I did. So I was doing it too so you guys could see where the outline was. But basically what you do is take a pencil or a marker like this and you draw a line on the very outside of the stencil. That way you can have the paper inside. It, it appears that the paper is inside the cloche is what I guess I'm trying to tell you. So I am going to cut it all out and then we're going to get started. The first thing I'm going to do is paint the wood block ingle nook. And again, it's going with that whole color palette and I'm just applying one even coat to the entire piece. While that is drying, then we're gonna do the next step. Now the cloche is all cut out, what I'm going to do is paint the back of it White Swan from DIY. So this is very similar to if I was going to paint the board white, I'm just painting the back. What, uh, you know, a tip for you uh, is when the uh, paper is in one solid piece before you cut the cloche out, paint the backside white, then trace the cloche, and then cut it out. It's a little bit more difficult to do it the way I'm doing it here. Um, your paper moves about. It can cause all kinds of paint to be um, put on the front. So um, just a, a quick tip for you. I decided that the background was too plain and I love using Le Courier. I love using Kindest Regards. 
I have been seeing a lot of gals over on the tribe using Portobello Rhodes bricks. And I thought, what a perfect opportunity to try a different background, more like a mixed media look. Now, if you don't know this, anytime you buy new sets of stamps, you do have to season them. So just take a very fine grit sandpaper and rub your sandpaper all over and then that will season your stamps. And I um, do that to all of them to prep them. And I am going to just use this chunk of bricks and let's get stamping using stone gray again. And again, I don't want that harshness or that black background. So stone gray will be perfect. It will add a little dimension and you'll see the brick, but it won't be so popping. So I apply just a nice even layer of the stone gray. I lay my first section down again, gently rub all over. And the nice thing about this stamp is that it just fits in um, into each other. So you can continue uh, on over and over and and then up. And that's what I do to the entire background. And then I am going to apply the decoupage paper next. Now that it's all dry, I position the decoupage paper, I pull it back, and again with the liquid patina, I'm just applying just a nice even coat of that. And I just try to envision where um, or how far up it's going to go, uh, smooth it out, and then work my way down. What I then do is apply an even coat of the liquid patina over the entire piece. Now, a question did come up that um, I use liquid patina only for decoupage. Is there anything else I can use the liquid patina for? And yes, you can. You can actually use liquid patina as a top coat as well. Just like Big Top, it has more of a matte finish versus Big Top has just a little bit of a sheen to it. So if you're looking for more of a matte finish, you can use liquid patina. Next, we're going to work on the snowman. And I, last week, was the very first time I had ever used rice paper. So I did not realize the strength of it. So there's all like fibers in it, and it makes it a little bit more difficult to tear versus just your normal um, tissue type of decoupage paper. Uh, so what I had, uh, quite a few viewers actually gave me the tip of using water and just wetting all the way around your image and then tear. So that is what I'm doing here. And oh my gosh, thank you everyone who gave me this tip. I appreciate it. It tore so easy. Um, last time I struggled and you guys obviously saw that in the video. I decide to add a little bit of the ingle nook to the snowman. He's got a lot of blue in him, so I am just going to take a very fine tip paintbrush and just add a bit of the ingle nook over some of that denim blue that Connie had painted. And I'm even doing it on the rim of his hat, and then I kind of trace a little bit of that ingle nook around his body as well and it's very easy just to add a little bit here and there and let me tell you I feel after watching Connie do her thing on her whiskey Wednesdays I I'm I feel like I can do it as well so I think all of you can add a little bit of paint here and there to any of your images now I position them where I think I possibly want him I am trying to decide, do I want them way on the bottom, in the middle, and then I decide I better lay down my stencil and figure out where all the lines are going to be, and that will probably be a good way to determine where I want them. Now that I have that all determined, I have them positioned just perfect. We're going to decoupage him down and again, just add a little bit more liquid patina, get him all smoothed out, let him dry, and then we're going to come back and we're going to reapply the stencil. I have my stencil laid down and now I'm grabbing the JRV stencil brush. A question recently came up is if I had to pick one of the stencil brushes, which one would it be? And my go-to 
are either the half inch or the one inch stencil brushes. So those are my two favorites. The smaller one I love using when you are in kind of a tight squeeze um, with a stencil. Uh, it's very tiny and it can get into a lot of the details. And then the larger one too, if you have a very big stencil um, where you have a lot of tap you know tapping to do that one is perfect for that so today i'm just using the half inch um, stencil brush and i'm using cast iron from fusion it is not a black black it's kind of like a grayish black so i'm offloading a bit and i am just going to stencil the entire um, perimeter of the actual stencil and then inside as well if you are wanting to keep your stencils completely clean with Fusion because it does have a top coat, I would recommend washing your stencil right after you get done using it. Here is what the stencil looks like. I do want to connect all the lines to make it look like one image. What I'm doing is taking that fine tip paintbrush again and I am just filling in the lines. And there was a couple spots where the stencil moved a little bit and you can see that marker line that I talked about earlier. I'm going to fix that as well. And now this part is complete. I decided to add a little bit of ingle nook uh, to the darker lines because if you look at a glass cloche sometimes it has a bit of a like a green or like a uh, tinge to the glass where um, it is not perfectly clear and I thought it would kind of make those dark lines just kind of tone them down a bit. So I'm just adding a little bit here and there and I really love the way that it looks. I felt like the picture needed to have a frame. So I went out, I had some scrap wood and I cut four pieces of wood and we're gonna make a frame. What I'm doing is I want to tie it in to the actual picture. So I'm taking that same cast iron color and I'm painting all four boards gonna let those dry and then we're gonna come back and we are gonna take my brad nailer and brad nail the um, edges on. Here it is, I have it laid out and I love how it looks you guys. So what I do is I kind of, I bring it to the edge. It makes it a little bit easier to brad nail it and I add three brad nails, uh, one on each side and then one in the center. I do that to both of the sides and then I do that to the top and the bottom as well. For project four, I thrifted this three drawer cabinet. I was at the Goodwill bins and everybody was passing it up. First of all, it did not have handles. And second of all, it weighed a ton, you guys. I mean, it's, it, it's little, but it's hefty. I negotiated though with the guy and I either paid $4.99 or $5.99 for it. And I think it was definitely worth it. For starters, I'm using Fusion's TSP and I took two capfuls and put it in that water. I'm taking an old rig and I am just washing all of the entire cabinet inside and out. And this has been my new go-to cleaner. It definitely works really well, you guys. Next, I want to make sure I'm getting all that dirt out of these beautiful details. And I am using an old toothbrush. Nope, not my husband's, but just an old one. And I am just really scrubbing in there with that TSP solution to get all that gunk out of these beautiful details. 
Typically with Fusion, you can paint over everything as is, but with a high gloss paint like this that's on this cabinet, you will want to use Ultra Grip. And what I have done is applied one even coat of Ultra Grip over the entire piece. I let it dry for 12 hours and then I come back and I'm going to paint my piece. Now that the Ultra Grip is dry, I'm applying two even coats of Ingle Nook to the piece. And my initial vision, you guys, was to just leave it as is and try to hide some of the imperfections. After I painted it, uh, the one thing that occurred was the drawers kind of stuck because there was already a lot of paint on there and then adding that ingle nook paint, uh, it was some of the drawers, like the bottom one did not want to go in and out. So what I decided to do was embrace the imperfections and I broke out my hand sander and I distressed the heck out of it. And I absolutely love how this turned out. After I distressed it, I felt like it needed something. So I sealed it with DIYs clear wax and that was the perfect finish for this project. For my fifth and final project, if you guys remember a while ago, I thrifted these two pictures and I thought about it just selling as is. They were kind of cool, but they kind of didn't go with my vibe. So I decided we are going to transform these today. I love the frames and I like how it is on canvas. And I initially was just going to paint the fronts and then I realized that the image actually goes around the edges so I had to take off the actual canvas from the frame and paint the entire canvas so what I'm doing is I am removing the canvas and it was just being held on by some simple brad nails so very easily I was able to pry that canvas off and then pull the brad nails out of the canvas so I could paint it here I'm just using a pliers and pulling the brad nails out. It was really that simple. Uh, so it, sometimes with projects, you just got to be a little creative with, you know, taking it apart. Um, so from here, we're going to paint the canvas. I actually had a couple different ideas for these frames. But I ended up going with Maze Roses. And you guys, this is such a beautiful transfer from the last IOD release. So not the holiday release, but the release prior to that. And it is so beautiful. So I am pulling out two of the pages and I am going to use that as the new images for these. Here is the first one and it has an M on there because there's some writing. So I'm going to take the M off. That way I can reuse that on a different project. 
I'm figuring out exactly where I want this and how I want to position it. Once I figure it all out, I just pull off that backing and I start applying the transfer. And really, I it's the first time that I've applied a transfer to canvas like this and it was as smooth as butter. It went on so easy, guys. I was worried because of the canvas that I would, you know, by rubbing and that I would stretch it. Not at all. I actually did not have to put a ton of pressure on it and it went on perfectly. So I love how these roses pop off of that angle nook and then wait until you see once I put that um, this canvas back in that frame. Oh it turned out so good. I do want to seal it. Uh, anytime you do use a transfer it is recommended you seal the transfer. A fusion paint does have a built-in sealer or built-in top coat, but I figured I better seal the transfer just in case. So I'm applying one even coat of Big Top to both of the pictures, and then what I do is I just put them back in the frame, flip them over, and I use my brad nailer and brad nail them back in. And this project was so easy, you guys, and it completely transformed the look and feel of these pictures. I hope I've inspired you today to grab some of your thrift store finds and upcycle them. I love the color palette that I chose today. It can be used during the holidays. That color, like that bluish minty color is perfect for winter and the holidays and it can go right into spring. Um, so beautiful in your home decor as well. Uh, so definitely an all-purpose color. I absolutely love it. Um, and I cannot wait to hear what your favorite item was. Honestly, you guys, that three drawer chest. Oh, I love it. Uh, it has been sitting in my shipping and receiving area and I keep looking or I kept looking at it. What am I going to do with it? Am I going to leave it as is? I really loved the white, but then I'm like, oh, it was kind of like dirty looking. So the color was absolutely perfect. And then I was going to leave it just as is. And then I decided to embrace those per imperfections. And I did a bit of a distressing and I love how the wood came out, a bit of that white undertone and it just was perfect. I cannot wait to get that in my booth. I know it will not last long. So I can't wait to hear what you guys think. Now, one thing I wanna mention is I was asked um, to be part of Jane Belante's uh, retreat and it is this coming spring. I am going to have all the information listed in the details below. That way, if you guys are interested, um, it is being held in, oh my, it will all be in the details. Here, I'm just winging it on the fly. <laughs> it's where Tony Romo was, Burlington, is being held in Burlington. It's where Tony Romo uh, lived. Okay, I do know that fun fact. Um, anyways, that is where the retreat is being held on the beautiful grounds. Um, it's like an art retreat. Uh, yes, absolutely amazing. So if you would be interested in um, partaking in that, spending a weekend with both Jane and I, I would love to have you. And again, I will put all the details below. There are still just a few spots left. So we definitely want to let everybody know about it um, before it completely books up. All right. Well, you guys, tonight I'm going live. Um, back at going live Mondays and Wednesdays. And um, then I will have another video for you guys on Friday. So I don't know yet what. 
Um, but all of a sudden I realized, you know, Thanksgiving is right around the corner. So, uh, just a couple days, so I better get on it. Right. All right. Anyways, you guys have yourselves a great week and a happy Thanksgiving and we'll see you Friday. Bye.